My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about integrating and automating your Sonos system with Apple HomeKit via HomeBridge. So first I want to show you what I've set up and then we can talk about how I pulled it off. So if I go here to my HomeKit home here, I'm in here in my office where we're filming, but then I can swipe to the next room and I have Office Music, which is specifically for controlling the music in my office via Sonos. So uh, this has a switch where I can control this Sonos speaker just by turning it on or off to resume whatever's been playing on it. So I can just turn it on and it'll start playing what I was playing earlier. Now, I don't want that to play because of YouTube content ID and stuff, so I'm just gonna stop that music right there. But uh, what I can also do is control Sonos alarms. Now, alarms allow you inside Sonos to set up to play a particular music source, could be an album, a playlist, a radio station, um, from any number of music services that Sonos supports. So it could be Apple Music, could be you know Amazon U YouTube Music, it could be uh, Spotify, whatever, you're interested in and integrate with Sonos. So those can be triggered with alarms and they can also be set to a specific volume level, whether they shuffle the playlist or not, different details like that. But so then you can then get these alarms showing in HomeKit as switches where you flip them on and off to enable them. So I can have, let's say, a workday routine or let's say workday afternoon music. So I turn that on and then my schedule for afternoon music gets scheduled for today where then starting at 1 p.m. it'll start playing back different selections of music. You know, and at 2 p.m. it'll change to whatever I've chosen for that selection of music. And I can change change these to be any different times of day or uh, you know whatever works for my schedule. And that can be really nice when you're working and you just want some music that you enjoy on but you don't want to necessarily have to think about that and focus on that while you're trying to focus on your work. And I've also gone ahead and integrated this into my good night shortcut. So I like to get up early in the mornings and work on my uh, side project best photos uh, which is an app in uh, the app store for iPhone and iPad for organizing and managing your iOS photo library. But if I go here to my shortcuts icons, I can run my bedtime routine and that will go ahead and ask me, it'll first arm my security system uh, with, via HomeKit without even asking me, it just does that. And then it'll ask me, do I wanna turn out the lights too? Let's not do that now, because we're filming. Uh, and then from there, it'll ask me, are you working early tomorrow? And if I say yes, then it will go, well, then it goes ahead in the shortcut and launches sleep cycle, which is how I track my sleep. But then if I go back to HomeKit, you'll know, or the Home app, you'll notice that early work music, the scene is turned on. So now I have, you know, two different uh, scheduled pieces of or music playing with via alarms in the morning, uh, which is just really nice to be part of the routine as I get up and get down here and get to work on my app. So how did I pull this off? Well, I'm using HomeBridge. Now, HomeBridge is an open source platform that runs on top of Node.js and uh, runs on your local network and it allows uh, integration uh, from with HomeKit with uh, other products and services that don't officially support HomeKit. Now, I'm going to already assume at this point that you have HomeBridge set up either with, you know, some kind of from scratch set up on like a Raspberry Pi or maybe a Hoobs box, which is what I've recently moved to and I really like. It's just a, kind of the easy button version of HomeBridge. It just, it comes pre-installed and pre-configured. Now, if HomeBridge is something you're interested in more background on and stuff, I was recently a guest uh, on the podcast, The Smart Home Show, uh, smarthome.fm. I'll link the episode in the description as well. So you can go check that out if you're interested in HomeBridge. And I previously did a video on my Hoobs setup on this channel and my HomeBridge setup last year. So I'll link some of those in the description as well if you're interested in checking them out. But let's say you have HomeBridge all set up and ready to go. Now the Sonos plugin is called the HomeBridge ZP plugin is the one that I've been using. And the ZP is short for Zone Player. And Zone Player is basically just any speaker or collection of speakers that you categorize as a zone in Sonos uh, that then appears on your local network. And that's a really cool thing about setting this up. You don't need to go get some kind of, you know, OAuth keys from Sonos or stuff. You just set up the plugin 
on your Homebridge box and you're good to go. It'll talk to Sonos over your local network. Now, I wanna go through some of the details of the configuration page. Uh, even if you're, you don't have it set up yet, I think this will give you a good idea what this plugin can do and can't do. Uh, and then we'll talk some more about some of the Sonos alarms and the details there. So of course you have the uh, address, which you can then specify a specific IP address, if you know what that is on your local network. But I just have it on auto, and I think most people just keep it on auto. And I'm gonna skip over a bunch of these settings where I just think people are just gonna use the defaults. And, and of course, if they're interesting to you, you can dive into more detail on them on your own. So the next one is really key though for this automations that I've been showing, which is alarm. So it's by default false, but you can turn it to true and that will expose all of your Sonos alarms as switches or services inside HomeKit. And um, we can talk more about that what a service means in a second related to this. But uh, anyways, you'll need to set that to true to get your alarms to show up. Now, also when you do that, they won't really show up as clearly labeled alarms. It'll just be some random number, like unique ID for the alarm. So you have to like toggle it on and off and look at the Sonos app to try and figure out, okay, which alarm is this? And then give it a name that makes sense in HomeKit. And of course that name sticks in HomeKit. So uh, you, that's, that is a little bit of a tricky thing to get the alarms to to uh, you know, make sure the names match uh, what makes sense to you. I named my alarms after the time they play, so that way if I play them or change what music plays, it doesn't matter in terms of the name in HomeKit. Uh, but of course, you can name your alarms whatever makes sense for you. So exclude AirPlay and Force S2. Both of those just really uh, pertain to which Sonos players you want visible in HomeKit. You might want it to only be older Sonos speakers you have that don't work with AirPlay 2 uh, or other stuff. If you do expose AirPlay 2 speakers in Sonos via this plugin, it's not gonna mess up the normal speaker uh, you know, you might see in HomeKit from the AirPlay 2 speaker as well. That's still gonna be there and work just fine. This is just an additional way to control those Sonos speakers. So the last key that I really wanna talk about here is the service key. Now this defines, uh, you know, how the speakers show up in HomeKit. So you can do this as a switch, but you can also have it uh, show up as either a light or a fan. Now that will give you more detailed automation in HomeKit over the volume, uh, it just sort of correlates the brightness of this light bulb or, or speed of the fan to volume on the Sonos side. Uh, personally, I just had trouble getting this to work well and um, I didn't really care about it. So, I mean, probably if I invested a little more time, I, I could have gotten it working, but I really like the concept of just flipping on the switch for the speaker and flipping it off. I think that makes the most sense. And I think that's the most usable if you're trying to explain it to other people in your family, how this works. If you look, there's a switch, you flip it, the music comes on, you turn it off, the music goes off. Now, one other thing is that these alarms are sort of grouped with the accessory in Sonos. You can have them show as separate tiles or you can have them all lumped together into one accessory. Personally, I like showing them as separate tiles and then I created a whole separate room for controlling my office music as you saw in the demo earlier. Uh, and I think that's really nice because if you wanna control these switches all with different scenes, then those scenes are neatly kept inside that extra room rather than being spread out over your other scenes which are related to let's say lighting or other more practical things. But of course, there's nothing stopping you from integrating this, these music scenes with lighting, um, but just keep that in mind. Now, of course, as you're probably noticing already, but just to clarify, the Sonos on off switch or the, the light or whatever service, when you, when you turn that on in some way, it's just resuming whatever was last playing on the Sonos speaker. Now, a Sonos speaker will have like a, a playing, now playing cue, and if you pause it and it never, it doesn't lose connection to power in the network, that'll just stay there for like, I don't know, forever basically as far as I've, I've seen. Uh, so then, you know, you could resume it days later and it will still play. But if there's nothing on the queue, if it's been cleared for one reason or another and you try and turn it on in HomeKit, it will just turn on and then turn back off. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind is that this is not giving you the ability to arbitrarily start playing specific music on the Sonos when you touch the button. It's just either resume what was playing or 
turn on or off an alarm. And of course, an alarm can, from the Sonos side, be configured to play specific music at a specific time, at a specific volume. So here in the Sonos app, you just go to this main uh, center tab here uh, with your system status, and then you tap on the little clock at the top and it'll open a screen about alarms. Now, keep in mind, I'm using the S2 app here. Of course, the S1 app is a thing and you can do alarms in the S1 app, the old version of Sonos, uh, but um, I'm just gonna talk about S2 here and I figure if you use S1, you can kind of correlate what I'm doing to that just fine. So then here I have different alarms. So in this case at the 5.15 a.m. alarm, I have it playing a specific album from Explosions in the Sky and that's via Apple Music. And then I have it specified to the room, of course, the office Sonos. Now the repeat thing, uh, that by default will have all the days checked. So you wanna have to come in here and uncheck the days if an alarm is on once and then you, you play the alarm, it will turn off. So you'll see the switch flip back off in HomeKit at some point after the alarm has been triggered if it's on once. But of course, you can use Sonos to automatically repeat the alarm if that's something you want. Uh, and that's completely separate from the HomeBridge stuff we're talking about. Um, then you can set the volume level you want for this particular alarm and it'll sort of fade in up to that volume level. Uh, and then you can also do an alarm duration. So some of my alarms I have limited. Uh, if, I, if I want them to automatically stop at a particular time, I can do that in here uh, where I can say, you know, certain hours and minutes. In my case, I want no limit on this alarm. Uh, you can also then choose if you want it to shuffle the music. The snooze alerts is if you have push notifications turned on for a uh, Sonos app installed on a device, then you'll get alerts about the alarm and you can use the notification actions in there to snooze it and, and kind of control it. That's more for if you're actually using an alarm, like for an alarm to like wake up or something. Um, but it, it, you know, I just turn it off here. I actually don't use the notification from Sonos at all on any of my devices, so it doesn't matter if I have it on or not. But And then you can see here, I'm playing in this case, a uh, piece of focus music from the Calm service, uh, music service, but you know, you can also do, so you can automate any music service that Sonos can talk to. And uh, then in this case, I do have an alarm duration limit of two hours. Let's say I wanna change that to one hour. I can go back and do that and hit save. Now. Once I modify an alarm, it'll automatically turn it on for me in Sonos. Uh, the other thing you can see is if we go back here to Office Music, now that 4 p.m. music alarm is on. So uh, these on-off states correlate between the two apps. So I can then turn it off, let's say in HomeKit, go back to Sonos, and it might take a second to refresh here. But uh, if we go back to alarms, yeah, you'll see the 4 p.m. alarm is off. And of course, if we wanted to add another alarm, we can go in here and choose the specific thing. You can also, along with pieces of music, you can specify a Sonos chime, which is just like a, a an alarm sound uh, if you just want to wake up with that. So I've been playing with these kinds of integrations uh, on and off for the past couple weeks. So I, I haven't actually like used this for a long period of time yet, but I'm really excited to get in the workflow of using these alarms and just seeing what it's like uh, day in and day out. And um, you know, I'll probably have to check back in with you guys on this channel or other ways like on Instagram just to let you know how it's going. But I've used Sonos alarms on and off for a long time uh, before integrating them with HomeKit. And they are a really great way to automate music playback. And it is, I think, one of the cool features of the Sonos system in general that you can schedule this music playback in different rooms at different times. And of course, you know, I'm showing uh, the more of the scenes, the alarm automation, but you can also imagine accessory state automation. So HomeKit can correlate like if the lights come on in a particular room, then resume playback of the music on those speakers. And then when the lights turn off in that room, stop the playback of that uh, set of speakers. So, um, you know, it's not just alarms and uh, time. There's, there's 
all kinds of different ways you can use this to automate your own speakers. So let me know in the comments below if there's some way that you really like to automate music playback in HomeKit. Of course, this is one way. You can also use a HomePod and Apple Music to automate uh, music as well with different scenes and things. Uh, I'd love to just hear those ideas and I think other people would too, just to get ideas of ways to automate music in your smart home. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really does help other people find this video and the channel. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks again so much for watching. Oh, and go ahead and uh, follow me over on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be posting about this kind of stuff and you know app development and other stuff over there too. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, cool. turn off the air conditioning. Okay, changing the living room's off. Oh. Okay, let's start this. <clears throat> my name's Eric Wielander. Welcome to my uh, the mic's out. Okay, there we go. My name's Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk.